Hello, welcome to this tutorial on how to create spot colour images from a photo. We're going to go through two examples today on how you can do this, one using Adobe Illustrator and one using Adobe Photoshop. So to start with, we'll look at Adobe Illustrator. So all I've done is to open up a high-res image into Illustrator. Next what we're going to do is we're going to convert this image into a grayscale. So we just need to select the image and go up to the object tab in the menu along the top. Now if we rasterize the image this dialog box will appear. We can choose the color model from this drop down menu and change it from RGB to grayscale. I'm going to leave the resolution background and options down the bottom here, the same as they already are as default. You can see that the image has now changed to a grayscale. So what we can effectively do now is replace the greys or the black and whites with a spot colour. If we select, make sure the image is selected again, and we ensure that the fill box over here is selected, not the stroke, we can then assign a spot colour to this image. And we can choose from the VersaWorks, Roland VersaWorks swatches here, or the Roland Colour Systems Library here. If I choose RDG White, we can see that the image will change. Gloss, or the Metallic Silver for the image. Choosing one of these will simply mean that we have this photo data as a spot colour. Just zoomed in a little bit here. We could also choose one of the Roland Colour System Library colours, so one of our spot colours. I'm going to choose the white spot colour for this example today though. Now that I've selected the RDG white over on the left hand side here, you can see the fill colour in the swatches. I'm also going to just copy this image and paste it again, so I can show you two different options today. I'm going to do that using the Control c and Control v options on my keyboard. Now that I have these two different images, what I can do is I can take one, and if I go to Edit, edit colours, I'm going to invert the colours of this one image. Just going to press OK to this colours note. Now what we can see is we have two of the same image but with inverted colours. The reason I've done this is when you print this image using a spot colour all of the dark areas that you see will come out as a more opaque finish to the light areas. So if we were printing this onto a clear substrate all of the white areas would be more clear, the dark areas would have more ink. So if I wanted to just get the white fluff that appears to be on this lady's face, I can then use the image on the right to print all of that in white. Now if I export this image, or save as, an EPS, I'm just going to save this onto my desktop, and I'm going to call it white images. I'm going to save that as an Illustrator EPS format. In the EPS options, there's nothing that needs to be changed. I'm just going to press OK. So now that we have saved these two different images as an EPS format with the spot colour, I'm now going to go into Roland VersaWorks and I'm going to add the job to the queue. Using the file that I just created. I'm going to bring that into my VS640 that I have connected here. This machine has both white and metallic ink configuration so it should be able to produce this, this sample. 
Under the document inf information here, you'll see under the special items, I hover over this white ink drop, which shows that it's recognized my spot color. I now open this job, go into the quality settings, I'm just going to choose a clear film. I'm also going to just make this a little bit larger so that we can see a little better. Underneath the quality tab again, I can now choose the color mode. If I go down to white, so it's going to recognize my white ink, we can see the two different representations here of the image. You'll notice how one has the crosshatch magenta showing up more in what were the light areas and one in the dark areas. This image could now be printed solely using the white ink. If I go back to Illustrator, what I also could have done was to keep the original file and create this white layer on top of the original CMYK file. This would have meant that in when, it, when I went into VersaWorks, I could have printed CMYK with the white on top and it would have printed the photo with the white information on top. So just as a quick recap in Illustrator, we opened our image into Illustrator. We then went to Object and Rasterize and chose Grayscale as our options, which converted the image to a grayscale. We then simply select a spot color from our libraries to assign that to the image. And then we had the option to edit the colors. You could adjust the color balance or we inverted the colors to give us these two different options here. Saving out as an EPS format, we then open this into VersaWorks and we can see the white information in the file. And that's how you create spot color images using Illustrator. Now we're going to look at how we can go through the same process in Adobe Photoshop. So once again, I've used this same image to open it into Adobe Photoshop. See, I have my single layer here. What I'm just going to do this time is to drag this layer into the new layer tab at the bottom here, just to create a copy of the original and turn off the original. Now it's a slightly different method that we use in Photoshop. I'm actually going to use the channels tab here if I select the channels tab, you can see that I have an RGB tab and then the same channels broken down into red, green and blue. I'm actually going to create a new spot channel now by going to this little drop down menu in the right hand corner. New spot channel. You need to name this the name of the spot color that we're going to use. This is the one restriction with using Photoshop here, is that you can only use the spot channels from the VersaWorks tab, not from the, the Roland Color Systems library. So the white, gloss, or metallic. I'm going to use the white as I did in the Illustrator example. The name has to be exactly the same as the spot color channel that we're using. So RDG, Roland DG in capitals, underscore, and then white. The color here is the representation that this color, will, that, that this uh, spot channel will have on the screen. I'm going to leave that as a cyan, but you could choose a different color should you wish to. The solidity is also how much of that color is going to be represented on the screen. I'm going to go for 30% and press OK. As you can see down here on the bottom right hand corner, I have now created a new spot channel and it's called RDG White. Now I need to select the information that I wish to print with my white layer. So what I'm going to do is to select the RGB channel, take this selection tool and select the whole image. I can now edit copy or control C, select my new channel again, and then edit paste or control V. We can now see that the image has changed and has become a cyan 
shade. That's represented by the spot channel that we chose. And down here in the right hand corner in this little preview, we can see that there is now information in the channel and this is the same as the rest of the image. Once again, I have the option to invert as I did in Illustrator. If I go to edit, sorry, if I go to image and go to adjustments, I can invert the image here or control I is the shortcut. We can now see in the little preview down here and in the preview in the main screen that the image has been inverted and that all of the light areas are now dark. So now all of the white of this image and all the light areas will be the white spotting. One of the advantages again of using Photoshop is that you can play with your selection that you choose to print in your new spot channel. So if I just make a selection of the spot channel and delete, we can see that the original image is still there. I'm just going to deselect and I'm going to select the RGB channel once again. Now any selection that you create inside of this layer, we can now copy that and bring it into our white channel. Instead of using the whole image as we did in Illustrator and creating a grayscale and moving that into the white channel, we can make a certain selection. So I could use the lasso tool to make a selection. Or perhaps the magic wand to create certain areas. But this tool that I'm going to use today is the color range tool. So this will allow me to select certain color ranges inside of the image. And it shows you a preview here of what the image, what the selection will look like. So if I wanted to create all of the darker pinks in this area, I can click here with my eyedropper tool and you can see in the preview that it's just selecting the darker pink areas of the image. This fuzziness bar will show you how much of the selection it's going to grab. What I'm going to do is to try and select all of the white in this image. So if I click inside of the white and play with the fuzziness here, I should be able to get a selection that will represent just all of the white powder in this image. And press OK. The selection you can see on the screen appears to have a definite edge. However, once you copy and select this, it will not. It will have a soft blend from the whites and the shades. If I now control C, copy this selection and select my white spot channel, I can paste. And you can see that the screen changed there. And you can see the cyan tinge to the white, which is representing our spot color. If you want to check on your little preview down here, we can enlarge that by going to the panel options, choosing a large preview. And you can actually see a faint selection inside this preview window. If we now save from Photoshop, we're actually going to save this in a PDF format. So from this drop down menu, I'm going to select Photoshop PDF. And we need to ensure that the spot colors box is selected here so that it recognizes the white channel that we created. I'm just going to pop that onto my desktop. And OK the box. One change that I would make in the Adobe PDF presets is to make the compatibility with PDF 1.3. And save the PDF. This is a box just about preserving the editing capabilities in your PDF. I'm going to click yes to that. Now, once again, if I open up VersaWorks, And I choose File, Add Jobs QA. I'm just going to wait for the PDF to save. There we can see that the PDF has popped up in my 
on my desktop. I'm going to open the PDF and bring that into VersaWorks. Once again, we can see under the document information and the special items that it's recognized the white ink channel. But this time, the white ink's simply going to be where the white in the image is, not a representation of the whole image in a spot channel. If I open up the file, perhaps enlarge the preview for us. Once again, I'm going to the quality tab and I'm going to choose a clear film and change the color mode to white. Now on the screen here, you can hardly see the representation using the magenta crosshatch because it's a very faint selection of the white. However, when we print this, this will print the white selection with the color fade going from light to dark. So just as a recap, in Photoshop, you open your image, you select them to channels and create a new channel, but not a new channel, but a new spot channel. And we name the channel, the spot color that we wish to use. We can then make a selection from the image and paste that into our new spot channel. When we save the image, we need to remember to tick the spot colors box here. We save as a PDF, which we can then open into VersaWorks. For this example here, we have the color image, the CMYK image, plus the white tinge to go on top, which will be great for a clear, uh, clear vinyl or a window sticker. And that's it on how to create spot color images using Adobe Photoshop.